pick them here. A college football off the radar pick them for week 10. And we have got 12 games, so let's go ahead and dive through them. We are going to get this thing done in less than an hour. Uh, last week, I went 5-6. and six. Chris went 6-5. and five. Overall on the season, I am 46 and 49. Chris, you are 39 and 56. Uh, but with the amount of games that we pick every week, uh, I believe that both of us can get back over 500 before the end of the season, and it starts this week. Game number one here, my brother, SMU traveling to the Liberty Bowl against Memphis. It's a 12 p.m. Eastern time game. Memphis, a four and a half point home underdog. <laughs> It opened at five and a half. It's now down to four and a half. Total of seventy and a half. Of course, the odds brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. There is a lot of chatter about Sunday Dykes really agreeing to the TCU job right now. I don't know that that's completely done, but it does make me wonder about SMU and whether yeah. or not they are fired up for this game. Uh, SMU won this game thirty to twenty-seven last year. Before that, uh, Memphis had won and covered six straight in the series. Look, there is a massive mismatch here. SMU number five in EPA per pass on offense. Memphis's defense is number 105 in that regard. I don't know what the situation is with the Memphis quarterback, but I don't necessarily know that it matters here. I really like SMU minus the four and a half here. Granted, that depends on whether or not Sonny Dykes is still bought in uh, after that loss last week if he has not already started packing to move you know, 40 miles uh, west to head over to Fort Worth. What, uh, what do you got on this one? I don't think guys do that. I don't, that's, that's insane. That's insane. I agree. That's why it's way me. better. Yeah. This Memphis team is trash. <laughs> he's not gonna. He's not gonna quit coaching the team that he's got just to just to you know get ready for the job that he's gonna coach next year. It's still these wins still go on his resume, and if he starts losing games, that that goes on his resume. And that's gonna hurt him. So he's gonna want to go in that Memphis game. He's gonna beat the hell out of him. And guess what? He's gonna beat the hell out of him. Memphis I- sucks. <laughs> Silverfield's terrible. I tend to agree. I tend to agree. But like, does Memphis have to completely fall off the map for uh, for them to not keep Silverfield? Like, I I, I wonder. Some of, it, I, some of it. Some of it. Some of it. Listen, all right. You got a marriage, and it's on the rocks. Okay, it's falling apart. Things are bad, and you know this thing's gonna come to an end soon. But do you try to make it work? Well, maybe it all depends. I mean, if that if that old lover shows back up it's easy to push that bitch out the window <laughs> you were all bought in on fuente coming back aren't you <laughs> yeah yeah if justin fuente sent a text in the direction of memphis i would fire silverfield on the spot yeah i could i could buy it i could buy it let's move into the next game we've got another 12 p.m eastern time game liberty heading to Ole miss it is the hugh freeze bowl You got Hugh headed up against Lane Kiffin. Ole Miss, a nine and a half point favorite, total of 67. Uh, Liberty, three and one straight up, four and oh against the spread as a road dog the last two seasons. You know, I. Is this Liberty Super Bowl? Like, I kind of feel like it is. They've got a bye week next week. They just got off of just absolutely drubbing UMass. Liberty, number seven in EPA per play margin. Ole Miss is number 48. Now, obviously, that is not adjusted. That's just raw numbers. Liberty has got some hosses in the trenches, man. They uh, they got some some big dudes down on the line of scrimmage. Ole Miss still dealing with injury issues to their top three wide receivers. Matt Corral a little banged up. And then, of course, this is a sandwich spot for Ole Miss. They just got off of uh, losing to Auburn. They've got Texas A&M next week. I... I'm going to go with Liberty because I think that, that Hugh Freeze wants this game. I think his players want this game for him. Lane Kiffin will be happy to get out of here with a three-point win, with a one-point. It doesn't matter. Just get a W on the board. Nine and a half feels like it might be too much for me. And these are two offensive guys. Like uh, the total of 67, I would kind of I would kind of think that thing would go over. But these are two teams that, while their pace of play is is pretty high up there uh, as far as Ole Misses goes. Liberty's is kind of slower. We got you know a, a pretty good Liberty defense, and Ole Miss has kept teams off the board. So while they may give up a bunch of yardage, they don't give up a bunch of points. At this I'm going to take Liberty here to uh, to keep this within nine and a half. Yeah, I think you has been uh, spending three years trying to prepare for this game, and I think this matters much more to him. I don't think this Liberty team is a great Liberty team like last year. Okay, I don't think they're nearly as good as they have been. But 
still got a great quarterback, still got a great head coach. Ole Miss is hurt. Ole Miss is banged up. It would not surprise me. I, I just want to see the mental gymnastics that the committee is going to do next week if Ole Miss loses. But I, I guarantee you they're still going to be ranked. They're going to be at like 24. Just because they got to have that, that's the oh, that's the marquee win that Alabama has right now. Yeah, yeah. No, you're you're right. You are right about that. Next game on the board, 3.30 p.m. We have got Michigan State heading to Purdue. The Boilermakers, a three-point underdog at home. This line looked uh, really short uh, coming off of a, a top-10 win for Michigan State last week. Total is 53 and a half. You would think that Michigan State would be in a letdown spot after a win over a top-10 Michigan team, but you go back and look over the last 10 years, they're 7-3 and three straight up. Uh, off of a win over Michigan, or not a not an, a win, sorry, off of the Michigan game in the last 10 seasons. So, you know, they don't, I guess they kind of expect to beat Michigan. There was no rushing the field last week, anything like that. They they just expected to go in and beat them. Michigan State has won eight straight against Purdue, but the last meeting was in 2018. Uh, Purdue is four and one against the spread in their last five against the Spartans. Uh, brother, there are some things that Purdue does that, that Michigan State has trouble with. I, I think Purdue can can pass the ball around a little bit. Now the raw numbers will not tell you that, but I mean we saw it against Iowa. Like they they find holes in the defense in Michigan State. I mean we saw it. Michigan had not been able to pass the ball very effectively all season, and they were able to to get some passing yards up on Michigan State. I this line scares me to death. I initially was going to take Purdue here. I think I'm going to take Michigan State minus the three. My line on it was Michigan State minus six. I mean, you look at some of the advanced numbers. Parker over at CFB-Graphs.com, his numbers actually have Purdue winning this by like a touchdown. So I don't know exactly what to make of it. Purdue's not going to be able to run the football on them. And, And Purdue's defense is number 10 in EPA per play. If they can slow down Kenneth Walker, make Peyton Thorne beat you, they, I mean, they got a shot to get some interceptions here. They got a shot to maybe make this a really, really tight ball game. But I'm, I'm going to roll with Sparty here at, at minus three. Yeah, Michigan State to play. You, you, you said all that stuff, and you went to pick Michigan State. That's amazing. Anyway, neither here nor there. Listen, you know what they're not going to do? They're not, I don't care what they've done in the past. They're not stopping Kenneth Walker. That's the thing. If they don't, if they do, then yeah, they win the game. But, but that's the best running back in football, Gary. And they're not stopping it. They're going to control the line of scrimmage. They're going to eat clock. They're going to play good defense. Yes, Purdue's going to be able to throw the football on them, and Purdue's going to score to the point. But it's not going to be enough. I, I, Michigan State scores just about every drive down, if, if not a touchdown, a field goal, just because I can't imagine this Purdue defense slowing down Kenneth enough to get them out of field goal range. I think he's that important, and I think he's that good. Yeah, I can uh, I can see that. All right, so we're both rolling Sparty here. Uh, we have picked the same thing three straight. Let's uh, let's see what we do on this one. Four p.m. Eastern time. We have got NC State heading to Florida State. Of course, Florida State coming off that heartbreaking loss against Clemson and one that really broke the heart of a bunch of different betters that had the under that had Florida State with the line. I mean, it just all sorts of stuff last week. It was it was pretty nuts the way that that game ended. A uh, total of 55 and a half. Florida State 0 and 2 as a home favorite this season. Uh, they have lost both outright. NC State 7 and 3 against the spread the last 10 against Florida State. You know, it, my question here is did Clemson kill Florida State's momentum? Oh. NC State has not been great on the road. Uh, and that that might be putting it lightly. You, you look at some of these numbers, I mean NC State's defense number 7 in success rate, number 17 in EPA per play. I I trust NC State's defense. And I trust Tim Beck and, and Devin Leary, the quarterback, to be able to put up enough points to be able to cover two and a half. I think they're just I think they're the better football team. And and I wonder if that loss to Clemson last week kind of set Florida State back just a little bit. Yeah, I like NC State. I think they're still a good football team. They they you know, they've got a couple of strange losses, and okay? they've got a loss to Miami, they've got a loss to Mississippi State. So nobody can really explain those, all right? But outside of that, they've looked really good, and they've played really well. I, I don't think Florida State's going to give them much trouble. Yeah, NC State kind of kind of demolished Louisville towards the end of that game because uh, that was a tight ball yep. game until they just decided to, to put their foot on, on the gas. And once they did that, it was over. They could probably do the same thing here against Florida State. Next game up, another 4 p.m. game, and I am 
pumped about this one. We have got Mississippi State going to Fayetteville, Arkansas, a five-point favorite, total of 55 and a half. Mississippi State has won four straight in Fayetteville. Obviously, different coaches for both teams in those games. Uh, Arkansas won this game 21-14 to in Starkville last year. It broke a 20-game SEC losing streak. State number 18 in EPA per play margin. Arkansas number 21. Uh, again, I brought it up earlier, but great matchups in coaching here. Uh, you've got Zach Arnett, the defense coordinator for Mississippi State, against Kendall Bryles, the OC at Arkansas. You've got Mike Leach. Of course, the uh, the brilliant offensive mind at Mississippi State against Barry Odom, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas. Uh, and then you got two quarterbacks that you're not sure exactly what you're going to get week in and week out, but Will Rogers against K.J. Jefferson is one hell of a matchup to watch. Will Rogers last week set an all-time SEC completion record in a game, hit 36 out of 39 passes. State has been playing really well, but every now and then they can throw up a dud. I... I like State plus five here. I think these teams are too evenly matched for this to be five points. This seems like a field goal game one way or the other. And and while I do think it will be pointsy, you know, it's 55 and a half. Uh, I, think, I think it's going to go over, and I think that we are going to get a field goal game. So give me Mississippi State plus the five here. All right, now we're finally getting off course here. Okay, all right. Mike Leach, who I love, and you know that, he never put two good weekends together in a, in a row. He just don't, all right? <laughs> Whenever he has a big, unexpected win, you can set your clock betting against him the following week. I think this Arkansas team is much, much better than they've looked the last couple of weeks because they were facing talent that was far superior than them. This week, they won't have that issue. I think this defense slows down Will Rogers. We've seen Will Rogers look bad and get flustered in the past. I think Barry Odom will absolutely cause that to happen. And I I think Burks is one of the best players on the planet, and there's nobody at Mississippi. Mississippi State's real good at doing what? Stopping the run. Well, guess what? Arkansas is going to swing that thing. <laughs> They're going to cover this. They're winning by touchdown. All right. All right. I can get down with it. Next game on the board, we have got another SEC night game here, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Your LSU Tigers headed to Bryant-Denny Stadium to take on Alabama. Alabama, a 28-and-a-half point favorite. Total is 66-and-a-half. And And if you would have told me after that 2019 game that in back-to-back seasons, Alabama would be more than a four-touchdown favorite against LSU, uh, I would have said that you were taking some crazy pills or something. Uh, Alabama won 55-to-17 last season. I think the key matchup in this spot here is LSU's pass rushers against Alabama's shaky offensive line. They have not been real good in pass pro really at all this season. They're very shaky at that point. If I'm Alabama, I'm number 34 in EPA per rush on offense. LSU is uh, number 114 in defensive rushing success rate. Uh, You're going to have to run the football against LSU if you want to have success. I don't anticipate a bunch of turnovers and all that kind of crap I think if Alabama wants to win this game, they're going to have to stick to the ground. I think that 28 and a half will be too many points here. Everybody talks about revenge and this and that. Alabama got their revenge last season. This Alabama team is not last season's Alabama team. I don't see them covering 28 and a half here. Like I think they'll win the game, but I think, you know, these LSU players are fighting. Like they are they are pushing for something. They're not great, but I think this is a much closer game than 28 and a half. Yeah, this is insane. Revenge, <laughs> revenge. A team, a team has bullied you for a decade, for a decade, for over a decade. Has bullied you and picked on you. They beat you one time, and their head coach says "fuck you" to you. And now all of a sudden, we got to get revenge against them. <laughs> wow, it's a blood boiler. You bunch of thin skin pussies. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just talking about the message that has come out from everybody talking about what it said uh, I know. in Tuscaloosa no, two years I know. ago. And I so, know. It's, re- it's revenge. <laughs> it's it got to be revenge because old fellas, because Coach O said, fuck you to Alabama. God, we got to get them. We got to get them. No, beat them for 20 years. Ain't no, 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 no. I'm going to write down LSU plus 28 and a half for you. <laughs> God, y'all are such Thin skin baby. <laughs> All right, let's let's move on to the next one. We've got we got 7 p.m. Eastern time. Boise State heading to Fresno State, heading down to the valley 
Fresno, a five-point favorite total of 60. The last meeting was in 2018, and they met twice that season. Kalen DeBoer, who is the new head coach at Fresno State, I say new, he's been there for two years now, but he was the offensive coordinator under Jeff Tedford at the time, and the last meeting was when Fresno State beat Boise on the blue turf to win the Mountain West Conference title. Uh, Boise won in five against the spread their last six against Fresno Boise State cannot run the football, and they definitely won't be able to do it against Fresno. And Fresno's pass defense is good. So if if Boise was looking to get ahead uh, by passing the ball here, I mean, that is their strength on offense, you're not going to be able to do it against this Boise defense. For whatever reason, like, Boise has not been very good at all this season. So when you look at some of these other numbers, net points per drive, Fresno is number 35, Boise number 52, et cetera, I, I think – that Fresno kind of looks at this as a coming out party. I think they can win this by a touchdown. I, I like the Bulldogs here. Fresno minus five. Yeah, I, I bet against them last week, but that was the first and only time I'll be betting against them. I, I, I like Fresno. I think they're good. Yeah, I tend, I tend to agree. I, Boise has just got some problems right now. Uh, you, you look at some of the – I mean, their defense is not bad, but they're not very good at stopping successful drives and – I don't know. I'm uh, I'm curious to see how this one's going to go. I do feel good about Fresno, though. Next game on the docket here, and we got a few more, so let me run through them. 7 p.m. Eastern time, Tennessee at Kentucky. This one, my friend, is a pick 'em. 56 and a half the total. Kentucky won this 34 to 7 last year, really based on the fact that Jared Garantano gave them the football uh, with a couple of pick sixes and a couple of short fields, etc. Tennessee is seven and two against the spread against Kentucky in their last nine. Uh, Kentucky. Hey, Kentucky is 72nd in EPA per pass on defense, but Tennessee is not a great passing team. Uh, it, Hendon Hooker, you know, was still dealing with injuries, et cetera. I, I expect him to play in this game. But where Tennessee does their damage is on the ground. Well, Kentucky, in that regard, is 26th in rushing EPA per play. Tennessee's defense is they not good. They couldn't stop the run last week against a team that doesn't run the football. Yeah, that's a, a lot of that, though, was the fact that Will Rogers was 36 out of 39 passing for however many freaking yards, and Kentucky turned the ball over four times. I, I don't expect them to do it in this situation. I the fact that it's good to stop the run. No, I mean, you, you're not wrong. It would have, Mississippi State had, what, like 90-something yards rushing last week? Uh, I don't know. They had four rushing touchdowns. Yeah. No, I mean, what's, the red zone. Yeah, they got down in the red the zone. Run. I... Yeah, I mean you you have a you have a valid point there. I, I look those, at this. Those were not those were not four goal line rushes for touchdowns because they threw it all the way down there. Okay, those those were twelve yard runs. Those are seven yard runs. Those are eight yard. You can't stop the run in the red zone. You're going to lose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now you got me. Now you got me all flustered on what my pick was. I like. I, no, I, no. <laughs> stick with your pick. Don't let me turn your mind. Uh, I think this is a get-right game for Will Levis. He did not look good last week. I think he can look good against this Tennessee defense. Tennessee's defense is not Mississippi State's defense. So I, I expect Kentucky to be able to put up points here. I'm going to take Kentucky to win as a pick em. I Initially this week, I felt really good about Tennessee plus three. But but the more I kind of dove into this game, I, I think Kentucky at night, at home, this crowd's going to be amped up. I like Kentucky here. Give me, give me the volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm ride hype one hooker. I can I can get down with it after what you were talking about. It's like uh, why am I why am I riding Kentucky here? What like what am I doing? All right, let's move on. Clemson heading to Louisville, seven p.m. or seven thirty p.m. Eastern time. Louisville, a four point underdog at home, forty six and a half. Clemson has won and covered in four straight against Louisville. DJ last week, DJ Ui Angalele had his second-highest QBR of the season last week against Florida State. It looked like the offense, you know, they're starting to get guys back healthy again. They they looked okay. They looked okay. Like, they would not have covered if it was not for that last uh, little bit there. But Louisville showed against NC State, like, what can happen to Malik Cunningham when he plays against a good defense, and they just kind of put him in a box. And that's what I expect Clemson to be able to do here. I I'm going to take Clemson minus the four. Aside from last week, they have not covered a single game all season. I I think they are kind of getting the ship righted just a touch, uh, just enough to be able to to cover this four points against Louisville this week. I don't care what stats say. I watched every second of that game last night, uh, last weekend of them against Florida State. Their offense did not look good. Their offense did not get back on track. Uyong Lele still looked like shit. Everything came very, very hard to them. Everything. So you're, I'll take take, the 
Yeah, you're taking Louisville, right? Louisville plus four. Yeah, I could see this being a field goal game either way. I, I think I think Louisville could be in trouble against that defense. That's that's the only reason I think that. Moving on, we have got a big one in the Big Twelve, and I say a big one as big as you can get whenever there's a, a three loss and a four loss team facing off against each other. Texas against Iowa State. Iowa State a six and a half point favorite at home in Ames. Total of sixty here. Iowa State won this one twenty three to twenty last year and kind of put the nail in the coffin for Tom Herman. Texas four and one against the spread. Their last five against Iowa State. They uh, they did not cover last season. Iowa State one and three. Against the spread as a home favorite this season, Texas is only two and four against the spread as a road dog. This Texas defense is an issue, man. Uh, they're they're number one hundred in defensive success rate. Iowa State number thirty nine in offensive success rate. But when you look at at just all of the different numbers, Texas has got significantly more talent overall than Iowa State. I I I think Iowa State wins the game if you flip a coin. But if I'm flipping a coin. I'm going to take the team with the head start. I like I like Texas plus the six and a half here because I think this could end up being a field goal game one way or the other. It could end up being 31-27, somewhere around there. I think I think Texas has enough players and enough explosive ability to keep this thing close and, and maybe even win the game. Well, why is this number almost a touchdown? What have we seen from Iowa State that thinks they're a touchdown better than this team? Uh, there. So Iowa State's numbers again. This all has to go back to taking away the turnovers and whatnot that they've had all season. You can't. You just can't. I know that. you can't do that. But that's, right. that's that's why the fine. line is where. I don't care. Then I don't care. I don't care. If you're not looking at all of the numbers, you're not going to look at the entire game to tell me why. Then it doesn't matter. Like the the, the, the information is garbage. Man. So that's fine. Give me Texas. I think Texas is winning this game. Listen, this is going to be a game that's going to be a fun game to watch because I think these teams play a lot alike. I think I think the, the the two best players on the on the field are going to be the running back, and 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 you got a pretty good matchup against those two guys. Give me Bijan, and and and, and I think he's going to be the difference. I think they can win the game. I I like it. I like it. We'll both. I think ride. this number is like five points too much. I, I thought this game should be close to a pickup. Yeah, that's a, a field goal game somewhere around there is what I what I thought. I just uh, don't understand what what I, I just don't understand anything about what anybody has seen that says. This is a this is a touchdown better than Iowa State's a touchdown better than anyone right now. I just don't think Iowa State's very good. I I'm a ride with you. Texas plus six and a half for both of us. And moving on, we are jumping into seven thirty p.m. Eastern time. We don't have to spend long on this one. Obviously, Indiana at Michigan. Michigan a nineteen and a half point favorite. Total of fifty and a half. It is the Fox primetime game for whatever reason. I guess brands. I suppose if Michigan wants to work on their passing game, this would be the week to do it. They are Indiana is number one hundred in EPA per passing defense. Indiana number one twenty one in EPA per play margin. Michigan is number fourteen. Uh, Michigan number six in net points per drive. Indiana number one hundred seven. Uh, I think this is a bounce back game. Michigan uh, gets the hurt off of them from last week, and they absolutely stomp on Indiana here. And so I'm I'm taking Michigan minus nineteen and a half. Yeah, yeah, the wheels are falling off of Indiana. I they agree. they just are not very good at all at, at anything. I mean, you look at these numbers; it is whew, so bad, so bad. All right, last one on the board. And this will this will get us out of here. Ten thirty p.m. Eastern Time, USC heading to Arizona State, and the Sun Devils are an eight and a half point favorite. Total is sixty. This Drake London injury has got to hurt the Trojans because their offense was majorly predicated on what he was able to do in that receiving core. Somehow, Arizona State is number eleven in EPA per play margin. <laughs> USC is number ninety in that metric. The question here, like, there's a bunch of questions. Does Jackson Dart provide a spark for this Trojan offense? Which team has quit? Because it kind of looked like both of them did last week. Does Arizona State clean up the mistakes? Because, man, they had a gargantuan amount of them, just a sack full of problems last week against Washington State when they were 16-point favorites. I, I'm i going to take Arizona State here because I do think they are the better team, and I think they still have something to play for. USC is just trying to figure out what's going on until they until they get a new coach. I just I, this is a ugly matchup, but it could end up being a lot of fun for being a Pac-12 after dark game. What uh, what you got on it? Yeah, no, I'm with you. I just uh, I can't bet one nickel on this USC team. It's a, I almost can't bet one nickel on uh, on Arizona State, and yet I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take them here. Yeah, because, that, I, they don't they don't bother me. I don't think they've quit. I mean, they they still have a coach there, that's competent, and capable, and knows what he's doing. Like, I'm not worried about that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can I can get down with that. Let's see. Hold on, that's that's my buddy Jonathan Hood. Uh, <laughs> all right, I think that's going to wrap it up. Is there uh, anything else you want to hit on? Nope, that's it. All right, all right. With that said, let me uh, let me let you out of here, and I'll wrap up the show. See you, man. Later, buddy. All right, that is the end of the show. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Go to BetUS, where the game begins. They bring you the show each and every time out. You can find them at BetUS.com. Use the promo code NCAAF2021. Go and check out the BetUS College Football Show. Go and check out the Sportsbook Review College Football Show. Chris does that one. I do the BetUS one. The links are in the description for that. Uh, Make sure and subscribe to the podcast. Share the show out. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.